This battle will definitely hit you in the feels. <laughs> Hello everyone, Trayman1 here, and welcome to the second round of the Alola League review. Yes, I know I didn't get to review the first round, and that's because I actually went on a little vacation, so I'm sorry about that, guys. But yes, we're here reviewing episode 130. Before I do that, though, I'm going to go ahead and give my quick thoughts on episode 129, the Battle Royale. I really enjoyed the Battle Royale a lot. It was really interesting to see some of the like team-ups that they did. Like I think that was a cool idea for like Mallow and Lana, Cowie and Lily and stuff. Like they to, them to participate and team up in the battle to basically progress. The scene with Ash and Gladion was really nice. Sadly, our boy How did not get any love in that episode. We just saw that he progressed to the next round. Overall, I think the Battle Royale was really good and so far it's my favorite episode of the league so far. But of course, it's going to change as we get more episodes in the league. Now, let's go ahead and get to the summary and my thoughts of episode 130. I gotta say, seeing the top 16 matches were pretty interesting like Lily and Gladion. I knew that they were going to have to battle one time in the league. I wasn't expecting Jesse and James to battle. Malo and Lana, I was hoping for them to have a battle, which we get in today's episode. Ilima versus Guzma really shocked me, though, because I thought Ash was going to be battling Ilima. But nope, Ilima is going to be taking on Guzma. And I got to say, the Ilima and Plumeria battle was pretty nice in the last episode, showing Ilima's strength and, you know, how he's the most likely to win is what they said. But it looks like that's going to change after their battle. I found it quite interesting that Ash was going in with Pikachu again. I thought he would have been, like, actually coming into this battle with Meltan. But no, he was going in with Pikachu again, which Ash, um, you got other Pokemon, you know. You, you can you can use them. Like, you ain't got to rely on Pikachu very bad on my man. But I get it. You know, he wanted to start the knockout rounds with Pikachu. Like, he always starts the leagues using Pikachu. But, like, the battle route, he used Pikachu, too. So I'm thinking, yeah, he probably would have gave Pikachu a rest. But Faba ends up playing the trick on that. And forces out Meltan because Faba believes that's Ash's weakest Pokemon and he can easily take it out. But no, Faba has not witnessed the strength of this beam blasting, metal eating chaos that is Meltan. Cool thing I like to point out again is that we also got the versus screens again, like which is really cool to see. We got to hear a lot of X and Y music in this episode as well, which is really nice. And it's just like really did bring back flashbacks. Oh man, they were on the versus screen. They have the X and Y music. Like this is cool that they did that. But yeah, Ash versus Fabo was pretty much a one shot. Meltan destroyed Hypno. It, it was an okay battle. It wasn't really too interesting. We all knew Ash was going to win this. And I think that's the reason why they kind of just skipped past this battle. Because yeah, we knew Ash was going to win. There's no point in really showing this battle for real. So, yep, Ash ended up beating Faba and Hypno. Guzma versus Ilima was a really interesting battle. Because as we know, Ilima and Team Skull has a bit of history with, you know, the main Team Skull male and, you know, with the girls and. With Plumeria in the last battle, like the last round. So we can see Guzman, you know, was ready to destroy Ilima, which he does in this battle. Since Ilima came from Kalos, he has a Mega Stone, of course. And we get to see Mega Kangaskhan in anime for the first time. And I got to say, it was interesting to see how Mega Kangaskhan was. Like, basically, like, they did a good job of showing off, basically, you know, how Mega Kangaskhan battled. But we really got to see how smart and strong Guzman was in this battle as well. Seeing that, you know, he had made a strategy for where if the baby Kangaskhan blocks the mother, like if the mother is, if it's in the mother's way, it's not going to attack because it doesn't want to injure his baby. Leaving the mother Kangaskhan vulnerable to many attacks, which is so crazy to see. Like my boy Guzman was just going at it full force, just keeps attacking this Kangaskhan. Ilima did start out pretty good, though. He got a lot of great hits on Guzma's scissor, but sadly, in the end, Ilima ended up losing, which, oh boy, Guzma's going to be pretty tough to take out. Like, I'm getting more and more pumped up for the Ash and Guzma battle as we get closer to it. Once again, no love for our boy Hao, as he, we basically get to see, like, just the end of his battle with Raichu. But I got to say, the animation in this little Hao versus Oak battle was really nice. Like, the movements of how and Oak were just so fluid in the Pokemon as well. It was, like, really out there. Like, they really brought out the animation in this scene, which got me really excited for the Ash versus How battle because, oh, boy, like, I can tell the animation is going to be pretty clean throughout that battle, especially since it's going to be an aerial battle between Rowlet and Decidueye. And, of course, how ends up winning easily against Oak's Alolan Executor. And we get to the main course of this episode. The battle between the besties, Mallow versus Lana. And as y'all know, I'm a big Mallow fan, so of course I was rooting for Mallow throughout this entire battle. Which, this battle really does show that, you know, Mallow really isn't a battler, and Lana really is serious about this, because 
For one, Malu couldn't really land any attacks on Primarina for the longest, even though she has the type of and Lon actually strategized for like type advantages too, teaching Pre Marina Icy Wind just in case she fights a grass type opponent, which is really interesting and cool to see that Lana has did this. Like she's really into battling. Of course, Lana, Kiao, and Ash are like the main ones who really want to, you know, just win the league, of course. Like we got to see that here, like how good Lana was at battling and how Malo was just kind of doing this for fun. Serena was knocked around so much to the point that Malo was about to forfeit the match, which shocked me because I'm like, wait. You can forfeit in the league? Like, I did not know this. And I guess it's like Malo said, okay, I know I'm not going to win this, so good battle, Lana. Like, it was fun. It was a fun thing that we did. So, I was like, wow. just the, It was so crazy to me to see that Malo almost forfeit. What I loved about the interactions between Malo and Lana here was that Lana was like, I know how much you care for others. You don't want Serena to push herself anymore and get hurt. But Serena actually wants to keep fighting, basically, like. It wants to fight alongside you and try and win this, so you got to keep going with your Pokemon. Like, that was a really nice, touching moment for Malo and Lana. And I really do love their friendship that they developed, like, they've built throughout the entire series. We even get some nice flashbacks to all the battles and moments that Malo and Serena had throughout the series, which is really cool. And pumps Malo up to finish this battle, which I'm like, yes, let's do this. Go full power, Malo. You can win this. Even your adventure starts playing through this battle, which I love this song, by the way. Like, this opening has to be one of my favorite Pokemon openings. So you know I was pumped watching this battle, hearing your adventure. Malo and Serena finally become fully in sync in battle and master their Z-move as well, which I was like, yes, let's go. And I thought Malo actually was about to win this. But Lana pulls a really cool strategy and ends up using Oceanic Operetta to block the Bloom Doom beam. So basically the Z moves clashed and Lana was okay. Like I was like, whoa, that's actually pretty cool to see like the Z moves clash like that. We kind of got to see that with Ash versus Nana too. So it's pretty interesting that they're using Z moves other than just like a one shot. Like they're using Z moves in many cool and different ways. And of course, after one more Aqua Jet, Serena is taken down, which I'm perfectly okay with, to be honest. Like, Lana, I already knew Lana was going to win, actually, because how dedicated she was to battling and winning. Like, we've seen throughout the series, she's pretty much a good battler, and she wants to battle. So, I kind of could tell this was going to happen. But Mala did a great job, and I actually do love the development that she went through in this episode with Serena. Like, it shows, like, Lana wants to show her, like, never give up. Even before the battles, Lana was like, let's give it our all. And I think Malo was almost about to give up. So, it's really nice to see that Lana helped Malo out in this moment. And she finally mastered her Z-move. Which now, everyone in the Sun and Moon group can use Z-moves, which is amazing. Even Ulu made it to see Malo's battle and was cheering her on as well. Which is really nice. A really nice moment, I gotta say. Once again, Sun and Moon does a great job with hitting you with, like, emotional episodes, especially, like, this one in the league at that. Like, the story about the Malo versus Lana battle was really good, and I got to say, this was an amazing battle. Like, it has me really excited to see what other character matches we'll have and what amazing battles. Like, Lily versus Gladion especially, because I can tell there's going to be a lot of emotions in that battle. And that's the last battle of the top 16 rounds, too, so... Oh boy, I'm ready for that. And Jesse versus James, actually. That's going to be really emotional, too. Especially because, like, you know, they, they both want to enter and they both want to win. But they got to, one and only one of them can make it out. So we got to wait and see. One really cool thing I liked about the League Stadium as well is that, that gro those grassy areas actually for the Pokemon to sit. So, like, that's actually kind of cool that they have, like, areas for the Pokemon to sit and watch the battles, too. Like, I think that was a really good idea for Professor Kukui. I was wondering, what, what's the point of the grass? Is it just design or something? Maybe make, look, make it look a little fancy, but as we see, that grass is for the Pokemon, which is cool. Also, Guzma is really being shown to be a really big threat. Like, I actually do want to see Guzma maybe battle Kiawe, too, and, you know, destroy him, like... We've seen that Guzma can take out Z Mega Mega Evolution. Like, I want to see if Guzma can easily take out somebody who uses a Z move. Like, if Kyle uses Infernal Overdrive and Guzma's Pokemon still stands after it, like, that would be really interesting. And it's really pumping for the Ash versus Guzma fight, especially if that's in the finals. Like, my goodness, Sun and Moon. I really do like how this league is being handled with they're actually not just focusing on Ash's battles, but everyone. Like, we got to see in this episode, Ash just kind of had like one or two minutes just to one shot at Faba, and they focused on Guzma, Ilama, and Lana and Malu. Like, I really do like that they're focusing on the other characters. And this league, it probably will more than likely be more than the average seven to eight episodes, which is also really interesting as well. 
I can't wait to see the other battles that we get to see. My guess for the like rest of the rounds is that Sophocles will beat Mina, Kiawe will beat Acerola, Gladion will beat Lily, and Jesse will beat James. Those are my predictions for the next round. But of course, we have to wait and see. Especially since Jesse's using Welby Pet, I, I really feel like Jesse's going to win this and that the next round will be double battle. So since Jesse has two Pokemon, she'll be good for the next round. While James, sadly, he won't be because he only has Marini. But yeah, guys, in the comment section down below, let me know what you all thought of this episode. What was your favorite battle from this episode? I would love to hear. And who, what battle are you most excited for in the next episode? Thank you all for watching, and I hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Trade Man 1. Peace out.